uh, with our next guest here on the program, a friend of mine by the name of Mark Serber, who is a pretty darn good soccer announcer in his day. Uh, is now working for a company that put me in touch with John Jones, who's the Vice President of Development for Project Healing Waters. He joins us via telephone. John, good morning. You're on with Rob, John, and Matt. Great to have you. Hi, good morning. Thank you very much. You're Appreciate quite, it. You're quite welcome. We may have spoken with you folks uh, a year ago or so, it's possible, because uh, you uh, what you do sounds familiar to me, but if you could uh, let our audience know exactly what Project Healing Waters does. Sure. Uh, Project Healing Waters has been around for 19 years. We have uh, over 183 programs uh, across 48 states, especially in the uh, wonderful, beautiful state of West Virginia, where we have eight programs. Um, and what we do is we take um, veterans that are um, affected by PTSD, as well as, you know, loss of connectedness and you know, that deal with anxiety, depression, isolation, and problems and in integrating back into society through um, fly fishing. So we utilize this through four key elephant ele elements, which are fly tying, rod building, and the art of the cast and day outings as our key program uh, areas. And you have uh, locations in West Virginia and uh, also yes, nearby in Maryland, too, where you do these uh, trips. Uh, Maryland and Virginia. Yes, we do. We've oh. got them in 48 states. Very good. So uh, how do you get in touch with the veterans who you're trying to reach? You know, actually, how we get in touch with our veterans uh, that we're trying to reach is, one, through word of mouth, two, through our social media platforms, um, three, through, um, you know, some of those veterans that were, um, you know, friends of friends of friends of friends. That's, that's pretty much how uh, the outreach goes, as, as well as going to our program leads that are, you know, like in Beckley or Clarksburg or Wheeling or Charleston area. They'll go out and they actually uh, will go to VFWs and say, hey, anybody who's needy in need of, you know, some therapeutic healing uh, through journey of what they want to do. And we're utilized fly fishing. We go out and do outreach. We have our own programs. We go through um, events. Like most of the time, whenever people are just outside fishing and they see a whole group of, of individuals, male and female, and they say, hey, what is this about? That's really how uh, we have grown to serve over 7,000 veterans per year uh, in in all of our programs. And the locations in West Virginia include Beckley, Clarksburg, Wheeling, Charleston, Huntington, Parkersburg, Morgantown, and Lewisburg. And uh, Matt Harvey, yeah, Matt. who's from Monroe County, said that's because that's where all the best fishing in the state is. <laughs> uh, Mr. Harvey. You know, I did say that. That's, that's for sure. Right. Have you Have you done a lot of fly fishing, Matt? Not a lot. I've done a lot of fishing, mm -hmm. but fly fishing, um, not as much. Uh, the, you know, straight, it's a lot easier, a lot, lot more accessible as a, with a spinning rod than it is a fly rod in a lot of these streams. Yeah. So why, why fly fishing, John? So why fly fishing? Mm -hmm. uh, well, if you really look at some of the studies that have come out, you know, especially like in the early years, 2008, a study indicated that fly fishing is a great way to initiate a relaxing response uh, in the recreational fishing, um, you know, side of the house. It's because of the nature that it be it boosts the uh, immune system, it reduces stress level, lowers blood pressure. It's able to increase the ability of focus, and what that does is, you know, because of that experience that you get through the art of the cast and you're always busy and you're always doing something, it really does seem to, one, really lower everything that, that goes along with, you know, being out there and being one with nature. Because, you know, since the beginning of man, you know, we've been in nature and nature is such a really good aspect of, being one and connected with the earth as well as being connected with the water. And yeah, you know what? I was a spin fisherman a long time ago because, you know, 
where I grew up in Oklahoma, it was, you know, fly fishing wasn't, you know, wasn't prevalent. But whenever I got into the program myself, because I was going through my own issues with PTSD and my own issues with um, things, I went into the VA system. And by setting down and tying a fly seemed to be more therapeutic for me than talking to the guy in the lab coat. And, and it seemed like that for everybody that I was with and 2016 at the VA center in Denver, Colorado, where I was going through it. And it really just seemed to calm everybody down from their heightened experiences. And, you know, with studies that have been happening through the VA and through other areas, you know, it's been really, um, really beneficial to be a part of that. And, you know, being here and, you know, doing what I do with um, Project Healing Waters, raising money for veterans and reaching out to more veterans to get them involved, that's that's the key. And I mentioned those West Virginia locations. Also in Virginia, Winchester is a location, and that's about a half an hour south of here. And Frederick in Maryland is a location, about another uh, half an hour, 40 minutes uh, east of here. Mr. Uh, Gilstrap. I'm, I'm curious how an individual who does not reach out to you with, with the involvement doesn't start with, with the individual calling and say, Hey, I'd like to be a part of this program where a, a relative or a, a friend gets the referral, especially when you, you talk about there's the PTSD and there's the loss of connectedness, which I think often go hand in hand. Do you have, is there a social worker component? Like I, I can think of a friend of mine, for example, or an acquaintance of mine is, is a better way to put it, who has some pretty severe PTSD issues that have led to a, a an aggressive loss of connectedness. Um, and there's no way in the world that he would call up and say, I want to do this, but arguably this would be worthwhile. How does that connection happen? I imagine it's, it's almost, it wouldn't be confrontational. That's the wrong thing, but you'd knock on the guy's door and, and say, hi, we're going to take you fly fishing. How does that start? So what, you know, that's a really good question on how it starts is, you know, with people that have seen what we do, um, you know, family members who hear about it that have a, you know, a, a member in their family that was in the service that it, are needing that connectedness back again because, you, you know, it, let, me, let me back up for a second because whenever we get out of the service, right, we go into uh, where we came from. And most of our friends that were prior to our service, they've already moved on. They they're, they've moved on. And, you know, veterans want to have a place to be able to go that they don't have to say their story all the time um, whenever they're in a civilian standpoint and setting. And they, you know, sometimes veterans have a different point of view. Uh, we have a different sense of humor. We have a different way that we talk to individuals. Um, and whenever you go into the program and you get introduced to it by a buddy, by a family member says, hey, you know, I heard about this program on online or on the news or uh, on your radio show or on your podcast. I think this would really help. Would you just try it? Right. And then most of the most of the veterans are like, yeah, I'll go try it. But I don't know anything about fly fishing. And it's not really about fly fishing. It's really about that connectedness and being a part of a tribe, again, where whenever you come in through those doors of, you know, wherever that it's at, at the VA center or at your local community center or something, it's really about whenever they come in, it's, hey, brother, hey, sister, welcome in, come on in, sit down, tell us your name and what branch of service you were with. And that's it at the beginning where, and then they, they feel like, oh, wow, okay, great, this is, a place where it's a safe space for me, right? And it's a safe space for those individuals to go in there and say, hey, this is, one, it's fun. Two, I, I didn't feel pressure of having to say, you know, what happened to me, you know, if they were blown up, if they had been shot at, if they, you know, lost their friends. It just kind of organically grows into a, a, a tribe again. And that's that's really how it goes. 
You got an endorsement from uh, one of our uh, guests on the program earlier today, uh, Joe Ferretti. He says, as a fly fisherman, Project Healing Waters is a wonderful program. I very much respect their work and the options they provide to those with physical challenges and other life obstacles. I have witnessed firsthand the joy these folks bring. That's a nice uh, note, Joe. Thank you. Matt? So <clears throat> is there any uh, requirement that, that a participant have a, an official diagnosis or is it all on the honor system? So, well, what we what we do is, you know, at the beginning of 2005, you know, we we decided, you know, hey, disabled veterans that need that have a rating um, is allowed to come into the program, and you know that has gone for the past 19 years. But we're finding that more veterans are having more issues, especially the 18 to 45 year olds where they won't go to the VA, they won't get a VA rating. And you can always tell whenever you're talking to a vet, if they've got problems, if you are a vet and, you know, Hey man, you need to, or you need to come in and be a part of this. And what we're trying to do over the next, you know, 20 years is open our aperture to help every veteran who has, who's in need of their own healing journey. And, that's really the crux of where we're trying to really maneuver and go with our organization because as we've been around for 19 years, you organizations have to evolve and they have to expand and they have to reach more people because the VA only covers about half of the veteran population. And those veterans that are within that age group of 18 to 45 are the most susceptible to suicide. And if we get to them, before it goes down that rabbit hole of suicide, that's the best uh, way that we can, you know, open our doors to those veterans that didn't go to the VA to get their VA disability rating. So that's where we're moving uh, in the future with our organization. If if someone is intimidated by the act of trying to learn how to fish is there opportunities for them to still be a part of this program and offer assistance in the other way and develop that connection? Oh, of course. I mean, if they don't want to fish because that's not their thing, but they want to be around the individuals, of course. Um, you know, there's volunteer opportunities, um, not only for veterans, but also for civilians that want to come in and, you know, show their support to America's heroes and to America's veterans by, you know, helping them out, uh, whether it be from, you know, just helping them with, you know, getting them access to the water or getting them a trip to go to access to the water because it just depends on, you know, in some of our programs, there's no access to water. Like from California, there's the saltwater side of the house, but um, like one of our programs that's in Long Beach, they have to travel six hours to get to, you know, fishable um, stream water for trout and things of that nature. But there's there's all different myriad types of ways of you know connecting and getting connected with project healing waters um, it's it's really based upon what that individual wants to do um whether it be just hang out with their their friends their brothers and sisters in arms to um you know volunteering to help you know set up the tables and set up the fly fly tying positions and you know, if there's rod building that's going on, hey, how do I help this individual that might have dexterity issues, you know, build a rod? Um, you know, how can I it, – it's just a myriad of different things of ways that individuals can, can assist and help. Uh, John, this is John Gilstrap. I want to get back to the, um, the hesitancy of the 18- to 45-year-olds to, to reach out. Is that get tied – just to the that sort of bravado inherent indestructibility mindset of that age group well i mean i'm within that age group and i think that uh it's um i think it's i think it's because we've we've our our age group has heard that the va is not very um admittable that it takes months and months and months to get your va appointments you know, the, the rigmarole that you have to do whenever you uh, have an injury or you don't have an injury or you think that, oh, well, I'm not that bad. 
so I don't need to go into the VA and then all, all of a sudden things manifest after, you know, 10 years of service, you know, or five years of service. So it, it really is a myriad of different, different things. And I don't think it's the mentality of the Superman mentality. Um, I think it's, you know, just the stigma that's happened in the, you know, over the past 20 years of, um, you know, the VA and the shifts and the changes that the VA has tried to do and that haven't done. And um, so that's where, that's my own personal uh, opinion on it because, you know, I am a combat wounded Marine, lost both legs below the knee. Does it take me a long time to get into the VA system to get my, you know, appointments? Sometimes, you know, it's very difficult because it's, and, and so that might hinder some some individuals, but I don't think it's all about a, uh, the Superman mentality of the indestructibility portion. John Jones, our guest here on the program, Vice President of Development, uh, Project Healing Waters. Uh, John, in regards to the f- fly fishing trips, uh, are these day trips for the most part? Uh, do some of them extend uh, to several days, and uh, how are they funded? Sure. So uh, funded privately. Uh, corporations, grants, and things of that nature from um, individuals that give up their time and their treasure. The um, rod building, fly tying, you know, the casting, the day outings. In each one of the veterans, it costs nothing for the veterans to go through this program. So that's really big key intricate part for this is they don't pay anything to do this. This is all uh, based upon, you know, grants and donations and corporations that have donated to um, Project Team and Waters. And, you know, how we do our events, we have an event going on at the Greenbrier, uh, which we've partnered with the Greenbrier to actually bring uh, our Lewisburg program to uh, the Greenbrier with their families to actually fish alongside donors that want to be there. Um, you know, that want to give to Project Healing Waters. So it's a really, really unique uh, way that we can do more outreach and um, be at the beautiful waters in West Virginia, as well as, you know, being able to connect our veterans and our donors together to be able to say, one, thank you to the donors, but two, for the donors to say thank you for all of these men and women that have actually sacrificed a lot for the freedoms that we have. John, what would you say to a veteran listening to this interview right now who hasn't made that move yet to reach out to maybe get some help or just to rejoin, uh, so to speak, uh, collegial relationships in society? What would you tell them right now about going on a fishing trip? Well, you know what? You're, I would say to the veterans, one, you're not alone in your issues. Uh, two, that we're here to help whenever you're ready to take that next step in your own healing journey, but take it faster than what you would because with what we have right now in America and especially with our veteran population with the suicide rate that's, you know, really, really detrimental for not only the veteran but their family, come in, be a part of Project TM Waters or find another organization that really um, – you know, goes with what you're really located and keyed into, whether it be in horses or art or music or fishing or hunting or something to where you can actually be a, be a part of a tribe again and really focusing in on your own mental health because from a person that's gone through the program that has gone through my own trials and tribulations, that if you don't get out and you don't, try to fix yourself, it's going to eat you away and that dragon is going to keep coming back um, every day uh, of your life. And for me, for my brothers and sisters, please, you know, reach out. And um, we're always here to help because we're, we're one of you. About a minute left, John, go ahead. What do you advise for a family member who sees their uh, husband, wife, mother, father, getting eaten up by this and and resistant to reaching out for help for themselves what do you recommend for a family member to do you know i would i would um i would have that family member 
you know, go and become a part of a program and volunteer for that program. And then that will help push the individual to join a program because they see and um, they'll see their family members, you know, wanting to help other people as well as them. And that seems to bode really well with veterans and especially reaching, having that family member reach out to one of their buddies or one of their um, sisters in arms that they might know and say, hey, you know, this is a really good program that um, you and could you please take uh, my son or my daughter to this program and just try it out and see if it's going to help. And that's where it starts. John, and that's the best advice I could do. John Jones, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you for your service to our country and for the sacrifices you have made, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Appreciate yours.